went. Um, so where am I looking? everyone welcome back to day two of mantras and music and today i am joined by three lovely ladies who are from art of collab you can't really see them but we'll show them later we are set up at my apartment in downtown orlando so please forgive me if you hear traffic or a train go by like i said yesterday just kind of ignore it so i hope you all were able to get to that pdf or perhaps review the recording from yesterday's session and are ready to go. I feel like today is going to be very hands-on. We're going to jump right into it. And kind of the agenda for today, I want to show you how I'm set up and kind of give you some ideas of how you can set up at home using what you have. Um, and then we are going to get into sketching your mantra and so while I'm sketching, I want you all to be sketching as well. And then we will get into finalizing our letters. And once we're done finalizing the letters, we'll move on to embellishments. And again, we'll all be doing this at, at the same time. So you'll see me um, on camera doing my thing, but you don't, please don't pay attention to what I'm doing unless you really want to, but focus on what you're doing. The whole point of today is basically just to gather and create and share this virtual space online. And then at the very end, I would love to see your space. I would love to see your work. Um, and I will show you what you could possibly do with your finished piece um, by framing it and taking pictures. Um, and, and yeah, so with that being said, let's get started. Um, can you actually move the camera okay we're good so we have two cameras so we have two cameras right now so you have you can see me actually working and drawing and then we have an additional camera to show me actually working in my space and so this is kind of like my little setup and what I typically use whenever I am hand lettering or uh, painting or anything that I really do on camera and is it possible to take the camera off to show them what it actually looks like and can you switch I so I have this tripod set up and I have this ring light connected and I have my phone actually recording and I wanted to make sure that everyone is able to do this if you want to. And so if you don't have a tripod, um, one of my ideas, and can I, can I actually use your phone? So what I normally do if I don't have my tripod because I normally don't always carry my tripod, you can take any, any coffee cup, any glass that you have at home that can fit your phone in. And all you have to do is set your phone in it like this and if you do like the time lapse videos or if you want to take a picture um, just set your phone in it like this and you're able to kind of record what you're doing so that's just like another way that you can record what you're doing without all of this technology so i just wanted to share this with you Okay, so we're going to switch to the second camera so we can get started. Yeah, Rolanda, it was, it's, it's definitely a cool hack. I, uh, I learned to be really resourceful when I was a young kid just because like I didn't have any money for things. And so I just kind of figured things out along the way using anything I could around the house. And the cup idea, I feel like is like a bit step up from what I was, what I was doing previously. I would like tape my camera to like a broomstick and I would hang it overhead. So, but the cup idea totally works. Um, so I uh, actually did a little video session after the, um, 
after the workshop yesterday and I did this mantra, which I shared with you all yesterday, Namiohar and Geiko, the Buddhist miracle man mantra. And so um, this is kind of my signature style of what I do. I, I freehand everything and I don't, I'm not really concerned with um, being perfect. And I just want to remind you all to not be concerned with being perfect. Just do your thing, be in the flow, um, and don't worry about what it's going to look like. Just kind of be in the moment. And so I am going to start on my sketch of my personal mantra using a new sheet of paper. And so we're going to spend about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes sketching our personal mantra. And then once we are done with that, I would like to take a moment and kind of see where you all are at in your progress. And then once we're done with sketching, I want to go into finalizing the letters. And so um, this is the point where you would take your, your pen and your marker and outline your sketch um, and really clean it up and make it nice. And I would say we might spend 20 minutes, 20 minutes on that. And then we will take a moment again and I will want to share, I would love for you all to share what you're doing and your progress. And then after we finalize our letters, we will take about 10 minutes to add embellishments. And so um, I want you all to know that I've been doing this for years. And so I feel like the time that I am allotting for this may not necessarily be enough time for you all, but I don't want you to rush. Please do not try to keep up with me. Please don't even think about the time. I just kind of wanted to give you a reference. Um, this session will be recorded. So if you go at your own pace and you might not even be ready to finalize your letters by the time we are ready to embellish, no worries. You can just keep going at your own pace and then finish it at a later time or after the session is over. But for the sake of everyone's time, um, I just wanted to kind of have a outline and be mindful of how much time we're spending on each section. So with that being said, um, let's get into it. So I am going to be using a micron these micron pens, these are my favorite. And today I will be sketching using the number eight micron pen. I also have, I also have a pencil. I probably, I'm not gonna use the pencil though. And um, I also have a Sharpie just in case I need to fill in my sketch. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. That was, that's the whole point of the sketching process. So depending on like how thick my lines are, I might just want to use uh, a Sharpie to fill in the letters. And then when we are move, moving on to the embellishment part, I have this 18 karat gold leafing pen that I, again, I may or may not use. We'll see how I feel. And I also have these, uh, acrylic inks. And so these are very um, fast drying ink. And I'm able to manipulate this ink pretty, pretty well on paper. And so I have these acrylic inks. And I have these brushes. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use any of this. It might just be my pen and it might just be black and white. So we'll see. Um, so with that being said, does anyone have any questions before we begin? Hi, Gina, it's Sri. I wasn't able to um, do the exercises for yesterday. Is there any just advice you have on how we start off? Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. 
um, I, I was asking, I wasn't able to join the, um, the, the rest of the rest of yesterday's session. And okay. I was just wondering what advice you have for just starting off with the sketch. Cause I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you have what you want to sketch in mind? Do you have your mantra that you, that you know you want to do? Yes. Okay. I would just take a few minutes and I would just sketch a couple of different ideas like quickly. Um, also your, if you have your, are you on your laptop? Yes. Okay. If you want to pull up your phone and like get on Instagram and just search for hand lettering and you can get a better idea of perhaps the style that you would like to use for today. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can spend some time, spend a couple minutes doing that. Um, again, I, we, we have the recording available. So like, just like feel free to do whatever you want. And then like late at a later time, you can like re you can watch the recording and kind of, um, do those hand lettering drills if you want. You, no one's required to do those hand lettering drills. I just thought it might have been like uh, helpful to kind of practice the movement. But you know, since you haven't done it, and I'm not sure if actually if most of you did those hand lettering drills. So what we could do right now is actually spend a few minutes and I can do some hand lettering drills with you all. So do you all want to do that? Sure. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, great. So we'll just spend a few minutes. You can follow along and I'm just basically going to do, uh, I'm not going to do the whole alphabet, but I'm going to do uh, letters. And so I will tell you all what I'm doing as I'm doing it so you can follow along. Um, so I'm so I'm gonna start out using my uh, micron my mic micron number eight pen. So if you all please get out your paper and your pen or your pencil or whatever you're going to use, and I'll go through some of these drills with you all right now. So basically, um, the PDF that I had uh, put together for you all had the alphabet. Uh, A to Z and I just wanted you all to kind of get used to um, the flow and the mechanics of certain letters and so right now we'll just we'll just start with um, we'll start with a so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to like remember to do like a certain uh, style of lettering because my particular style of lettering is kind of like all over the place, it, it, so bear with me. But so let's start with A. Um, typically with A's, I usually start with the bottom and I just make my way up and then I make my way down. And this is called the downstroke, right? So when I began, I did the upstroke. And usually when you do an upstroke, you use less weight. And when you go down, you use more weight. Now with the pen, you really, um, you really can't tell. So I wanted to, let me finish actually the A so you know it's an A. Um, so that's with a pen. That's what it looks like with the pen. And this would be considered like the first step in sketching. Um, and then later we would build more weight. So I'm gonna switch to the graphic one pen and it's like a thicker it's like a thicker pen and I'm just going to replicate what I did with the A right here. So as you're going up it's called the upstroke and as you're going down it's called the downstroke. Okay. And then I am going to switch to um, a fat sharpie marker so you can see what it looks like with a marker. So again, I'm going up and then down. So whenever you are drawing the letter A, do you understand what I'm saying when you're going up 
you use less weight. And when you're going down the downstroke, you use more weight or you apply more pressure. And to give you another idea, using this, using this um, Sharpie marker, I'm just kind of, I'm gonna like kind of like squiggle some lines so you can see um, more. So I'm going up and I'm putting pressure going down. I'm going up, I'm putting pressure down. I'm going up, I'm putting pressure down. So if you if you take a look, you can see that the lines that I have created going up are are kind of lighter than the ones going down. And depending on what you're using, what kind of what kind of marker you're using, what kind of pen you're using, um, you might be able to see a difference, but this is basically the gist of the upstrokes and the downstrokes. So I'm gonna switch back to my Micron number eight pen, which is the pen that I use with sketching and continue, um, what was uh, continue uh, doing letters. So just, we'll continue with, uh, I guess I didn't do any lowercase, so there's an A and a lowercase A. So we're just gonna practice doing letters. All right, I'm gonna move on to B. Now, everyone has their own style of lettering. And when we're in school, we're taught a certain way to do our alphabets, right? But me, I always have to be different. And so do what feels natural to you. You might see me draw a letter in a way that you've never done it, but it's just the way that I have done it for years. And so it might be a little bit weird and um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to continue on with the alphabet. Um, while I'm doing this, you can follow along and, and do your alphabets as well. You don't have to like go along with me. Go, 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 go at whatever pace you're doing. Did you, did you see the way I did my B? Is that weird? Because I start, so what, again, like, I don't do things, like, traditionally, so I have to remember, okay, this is, this is how you learn. Um, so with, like, a B, you probably typically start from the bottom, right? But I just realized I always start from, like, the top, but whatever, it works. No rules, or at least learn the rules so you can break them. These are actually pretty helpful to do anytime that maybe you haven't done something in a while, just to kind of like warm your hand up. Um, And the style of lettering that I'm doing right now is just regular print. And if we were on the computer using a font, this would be considered sans serif. D might be another letter that I do kind of weird because again, I start from like the top and I go down and then I round it out. But I think we were taught in school to start from the bottom, but whatever. And E. E is another letter that I do kind of weird because I always do all lowercase, even when I'm doing uppercase for E. So I'll give you an example of what I'm doing. So anytime I do an E in my lettering work, this is this kind of style that I do. 
every I mean not all the time but I just I love the way it feels whenever I do this so I just do this for uppercase letters too but sometimes I will do a traditional E like that and again I like the way it drawing letters feels and so for me um, I'm not too sure if you've noticed but uh, and this is not all the time but most of the time I prefer more soft edges uh, more rounded corners and so if you notice when I just did this uh, uppercase E I actually kind of like round it down around it at the bottom I feel like most people would probably just draw a straight line like this, right? And then connect like that. But I typically uh, round my letters. It just feels good. Like I'm rounding my letters right now. Um, and probably traditionally, you would be taught to make a straight line and then curve your E like that. Again, you can do all of the practice that you want and just do what makes you feel good. Do what, do what feels right and what feels natural. F is one of those uh, letters I do pretty traditionally, um, but I guess it just depends on my mood of where I start the upstroke or downstroke. So sometimes I'll start from the bottom. Uh, sometimes saw it from the top so whatever feels right okay I have to admit something to you all because I'm kind of embarrassed so obviously my name is Gina and I have always had trouble drawing the letter G. Like, low key, I've always been kind of insecure about the way that I draw the letter G. And I don't know what it is because it's always been like that. And so, um, yeah, so you'll see. <laughs> and perhaps it's because I round my letters that sometimes it just doesn't look right. But I don't even know how you do a regular G. I think my problem is always like this top, like it's always kind of off. But whenever I started doing lettering and um, kind of developing my signature style, um, I, I, again, like, this idea of embracing imperfection, I embrace the fact that my teeth weren't up to par, but like I embraced it. And then I, 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 I just, I just like kind of took ownership of like my signature and how I can have my signature look however I want it to look. And so I'm not too sure if you have noticed whenever I post on Instagram, um, my lettering, but I actually have a signature specifically for when I do those. And it's simply just a heart and a G. And it works because I do like the swirls for the embellishments, but it's just a little tidbit. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I have to say the alphabet to remind me what comes next whenever I'm doing something like this. Like whenever I was putting together that PDF, I was like, okay, what comes after F? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I 
I hope everyone is feeling comfortable and kind of getting in the groove. The micron pens are my favorite. I'm glad that you're using it, Shri. This is kind of like practice in elementary school, but way fun. I is another interesting letter because sometimes I don't do like the, the tails of the I. Um, it really just like depends on my mood. I love letters where you have like a dot. So like I and J, just because you can have like a lot of fun with like your dot. I know probably a lot of us in school have probably done this with like the heart. You could do different shapes. So I'm, I'm trying to do basic print lettering right now just for this warm up. Um, and in a minute, I'll show you how I um, kind of add some flair to certain letters, just like kind of like what I naturally do. I really love doing O's. I do a lot of circles in my work and there's just something about being able to kind of like draw a circle that satisfies me. If you see what I just did with the R, I had a sharp angle, and then the second one I did was more rounded. So just like little things that you can do, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I just realized, I don't think I really do a lot of lowercase R's in my work. S is one of those other letters that I do kind of weird because I feel like when you're taught to do an S, you start at the top like that. But every time I do S's, I start from the bottom. Is that just me? Do, does anyone do S's like I just did? <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> okay. And then I, I also, so I usually do this kind of S, but I also sometimes will do an S like that. And I actually start from the top when I do an S like that. Yeah. All right, T. T is another letter that you can do variation of, so I just did like a pretty standard T. But you can also do a little curve at the bottom like that. And then U, that's pretty. B, 
Sometimes I round my V at the bottom so it's just a little bit softer. Same with the W. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's soft. X is pretty standard, but sometimes I do give it a little curve, just like that's just naturally how I write. So traditionally, it's like a straight line like that. But most of the time, whenever I have to use an X, I like round it like that. It just feels good. And why is another letter I have like a weird like <laughs> relationship with? I do Y is really weird. I think in grade school, you're probably taught to do something like this, right? Or maybe like this. But I always do my Y's like this. Again, it just feels good. And then Z, I don't think I actually ever <laughs> use Z. So that's a straight Z. Here is more of a curved, curved Z. Z. Um, so yeah, so the, this is a simple warm-up exercise. Would you be all, would you all be interested in seeing me go over like my personal um, style of lettering really quickly? just to see maybe a variation, or do you want to move on to sketching sure. your own mantra? Sure. Could, you, could you do a sample of your word change, please? I'm sorry, what? Would you please do a sample of maybe change? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Oh, and the paper I'm using today, I, I showed you all yesterday, is this crystal paper. Um, so as you can see, um, there's no bleed and I even used this marker. So this is one, I, this is why I really love this paper and it just feel, if you could feel it right now, it feels just so smooth. Um, okay. So I'm just going to quickly go through the alphabet with, um, light variations and what I just showed you. So you can see more of um, my style and perhaps get an idea for your own sketch. Um, and so I'm just going to run through. I'm not going to really speak. I'm just going to run through really, like really quickly, okay? By the way, whenever I am doing my lettering, I often switch between print and script. Um, and I often switch between lowercase and uppercase in any word that I do. Um, like I said, there's no rules to this. I mean, there's some guidelines, but do what you do. So, I know I said I wasn't going to talk, but if you notice, I love to do these like little swirls 
on the tails of things. It's just kind of what feels good to me and what I have developed over time. Um, but again, you can you can do whatever. R is, again, R is, R is one of those letters. I, I typically never do a lowercase when I need to do a lowercase. I always just make it a baby R. So what you see is pretty much my um, style that I've kind of developed. Um, it takes a little bit of scripts, a little bit of traditional prints or sans serif, and I kind of started playing around with tails and adding little swirls or curves to the tails. It's just really fun. It's really, really fun to do. And um, now that I've actually done this, I want to give you an example of how you could extend um, these tails if you would like to incorporate it into your own design. So let me get a new piece. So let's see, let's use the word love. I'm gonna give you all an example of how perhaps you could extend the tail of love. So this is me extending the tail. I always do this freehand. Um, so you might want to get a ruler out and use pencil whenever you're doing this part, if you're not used to this. Um, but at the same time, I say just go for it. Um, so I would always just do my L first if I know I want to extend that tail. And then I fit in the other letters to make it work with what I have. So I have my L done. And then I'm just gonna fit in um, the rest of the letters. Like that. And then, so this would be considered like a sketch for me. And what I would do is I would go in and I would build these letters and be able to add more weight to them. And then usually whenever I do my embellishments, I am able to kind of add embellishments in certain spaces, which I'll show you all whenever we get to that, to that stage of, of the workshop. So this is an example um, of a tail that I've extended. Let's see, um, what else can I show you? Oh, I could do probably an S. So let's use the word sun. Um, let's see, what would feel good? Let's see. So you all see how I just did that with this tail, I just kind of extended it. So 
So that's another example of how I extended the, the tail. Um, and then I'll do one more. I'll use Y because Y is, y is one of those good letters that you can easily do an extension off of the tail, much like I did with the L and love. So Y will say yes. So I come down and I kind of just like swoop around like how I did with that L. And then I just make sure whatever I want, I fit in with whatever I did. I don't worry about being perfect. What did I say? Yes? Yeah. You see how I just fit those letters in? And then from there, since we're already kind of, kind of sketching and kind of giving you all a composition and layout, um, I love doing these extensions on the tails because not only are they fun, but I feel like it adds a little bit more to the actual design. And so I'm just gonna, just gonna like continue using yes as my example and show you all how you can work with um, a tail like this. So I'm gonna just say, yes, we can. Again, I'm gonna add a little extended tail on the can part and fit in the rest of my letters. Yes, we can. So at this point, I think um, we've all had some good practice with the letters. And I would like to jump into actually sketching your personal mantra. And so I'm going to do mine, and then you all decide what you want to do. Hopefully, you've already decided what you want to do. And can one of you set a timer? We're going to give ourselves what, 10, 15 minutes? So maybe set it for 15 minutes. Um, starting now, please go ahead and uh, sketch out your personal mantra. Also, if at any moment, any of you have any questions, please just like type it in the chat or that's probably best. Type it in the chat and I will be able to see it and answer you as I'm doing what I'm doing. Hey all, does, does anyone have an idea or would you all like to see me do something specific um, for my mantra? It, does anyone have any idea? I was just thinking it might be nice if you have an idea in your mind, but maybe you need um, something to look at or a model, I guess I should say. So I'm open to doing a personal mantra of one of yours. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. <laughs> Anyone else? All 
All right, I'm gonna do I Am Powerful, Shri. Am I unmuted? I am enough, Janet, I am enough. Honestly, like I could probably work really quickly, so I could do both. So I'll do I am powerful and I am enough. Can you unmute me? <laughs> so Sri, this is, I am powerful and I'm pretty happy with like my sketch. Again, like I don't typically sketch. I kind of just do just because I've had a lot of practice. Um, so this, this is my sketch for I am powerful. And later when we get to the stage of like finalizing, you'll see me kind of fill in certain weights. And so I'm happy with this. And this is what I'm going to use. If you want to take a picture or. No, it's pretty good. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to do, I am enough. I'm going to try to do it different. Usually I would probably, I, whenever I'm doing anything that, um, kind of has repetitive words, I typically use the same layout. So I'll do something different for I am, I am enough. Oh, fuck. I totally misspelled that. Okay, so this would be my sketch for I am enough. Does that give you an idea, Janet? Cool.
A hundred pounds. And can you actually go through the
Hey all, it's time to move on to finalizing your sketch. Is everyone okay with me moving on? Cool. I'm going to move on. We're all, let's all move on. If you, if you're not exactly ready, continue sketching out your ideas. Um, that's totally okay. So what I'm going to do at this moment, um, I did a couple different sketches, but I think I'm going to like roll with, uh, I am worth it just because I was super inspired by the video that I, that we showed yesterday. So what I'm going to do is kind of, um, fill in some of these, these letters to give it more weight and, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So we'll probably spend about 20 minutes. So, um, whenever it comes near 20 minutes, I'll give you all a warning. Um, but again, please don't feel rushed, go at your own pace. Um, but we'll move on in about 20 minutes to embellishments. And again, if at any time that you have a question, please just uh, message us in the chat box and I will get back to you. What pen am I using to fill it in? So I'm not too sure exactly like what I'm going to do as far as like weight. And so I'm just going to continue using my Micron. Um, I like using the Micron specifically number eight just because I have more control and I am very familiar with it. And so I don't think you looking at this layout, I don't think I'm going to need to use my marker because I don't think I'm going to make these, these lines very thick. Um, but if I were going to make the, the lines thick, I would totally just switch to my marker just because it's easier to fill in. Oh my God. I love this song. This is like one of my favorite songs. Anyway. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but it's snow Allegra. I want you around. Um, so yeah, so this is the pen I'm going to use. Oh, and pro tip before I actually start, because sometimes you might, um, move on quick, quickly, like as far as like moving around. And so what I like to do, and this isn't every, this isn't all the time, but in order for me to prevent smudges, I typically will like put a piece of paper and then kind of fill in what I'm doing just so I can kind of, uh, preserve, uh, my original drawing. Um, it's not guaranteed, but it totally helps. And, uh, yeah. Actually, I'm going to do it right now because I'm not too sure. So I typically, whenever I'm ready to finalize letters, like what you just, I don't know if you can see, but I just um, kind of made an outline to guide where I'm going to fill. Sometimes I don't actually use it to like the T, but it helps me. So like, for example, I'm going to do something similar to the bottom just to help guide me. So like that. And oftentimes you'll find yourself wanting to go back and like fill in other areas to make it more, look more balanced. Um, but this is all based on how you think it should look and how it feels to you. Um, I know I told you about upstrokes and downstrokes about, and how upstrokes should be lighter and downstrokes should be, should be heavier. But whenever you're doing hand lettering, you can do whatever you want. And so I don't always follow those rules whenever I'm finalizing a design. Um, and oftentimes I make all of my strokes like pretty even just because like, that's my style. Um, but I just wanted to make you aware that you don't really have to follow those rules. I just wanted to let you know, like the basics.
And whenever I am actually uh, finalizing letters and filling it in, oftentimes I, I will just go ahead and finalize letter by letter. Um, you might see a lot of other hand lettering artists actually do more, um, more of like a complete sketch and a complete outline. So like what they would do is go through and like outline each letter and then go through and fill it in. But like, that's just not part of my process. So I typically outline and fill in and finalize a letter as I go. And then at the end, you'll see, I might go back and touch up certain letters, but this is just like how I roll. Do whatever you feel is comfortable, whether it's outlining and filling in letters as you go or outlining the whole thing and then going back and filling it in. Dang, I did not intend to make my letters this thick. But you work with what you got.
so I wanted to share really quickly as you see me, if you're even, if you're paying attention to what I'm doing, um, I've basically just been going in and filling in, uh, the weight of each letter. Um, I didn't intend to make these letters as thick as I did, but since I already did it, I'm not trying to start over. So I'm just like rolling with it. Um, but this is pretty much like how I finalize letters is I often will start filling in one letter and then another, and then I kind of see where it goes from there. And then usually after I'm done filling in the letters, I will go back and add more weight to certain areas, depending on like how I want it to look. So that's, that's where we are right now. And I think how much, how much time do you have left? Okay. Okay. So we're going to be um, wrapping up this particular stage um, soon. But again, don't feel rushed. Go at your own pace. We're going to spend about five more minutes on finalizing your design and then uh, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to ask if anyone wants to share. I really hope you all would like to share what you have done so far and then we'll continue on to embellishing our work. So five more minutes and then uh, we'll move on. It's like a hot dog. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever thought about DJing? Make really great playlists. I do make great playlists. <laughs> I have thought about it probably more than I would like to admit to, but um, if I can be in a space and I could just play my playlist, I would love to curate playlists for events and like whatever is going on because I am really passionate about that. I was actually, um, I, uh, I had, whenever I had my first solo art show, I was actually planning on um, basically, because I'm working with a budget, you know what I'm saying? So I was originally planning on just like creating a playlist and playing that throughout the event. And I did, like I created a playlist and I played it throughout the event. But I also was able to connect with a couple of guys that live here in Orlando. Um, one's a producer and one's like a singer. Uh, I mean, they're all like multifaceted. Um, but I actually got connected through them, through one of my really good friends. Um, and I had asked them, I'm like, hey, like, I got this art show. Do you want to, you know, perform? And um, so I was actually able to have like, live music and they were so dope but before because I, I wanted to give them like a stage or a platform to do their thing I didn't want to take away from like their performance like I didn't want them playing in the background while like people were like looking at my art and so I created this playlist and I played the playlist for the entire time that we were kind of just like mingling and talking and then towards the end, I had them like come up. So it was kind of like, it was a 
it was a exhibit slash like mini concert uh but it was a great time Okay, y'all, we are near the end of the finalizing our lettering part. Um, I would love, love, love to see where you are. So if you wouldn't mind, does anyone want to volunteer um, and show us what you got going on? And we will have Nath kind of make you the presenter. Hey, Gina, this is Rolanda. Hey, Rolanda. Volunteer. Hey, again, this is such an awesome experience. Thank you so much for teaching us and hosting this. Thank you. Um, oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> um, so I'm going to turn this towards the camera. So hopefully you're able to see it. Okay. Move all this stuff out of the way. Um, but basically my mantra, I couldn't decide on one. So I'm kind of like combined like 10 things. But basically <laughs> yeah, it, sure. says, <laughs> it says made to fly, born to soar, forever free bird. And so see, I haven't finished the finalizing portion, but we're getting there. It's free bird. Yay. Free chronicles. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's her intro, y'all. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it oh. you with your little, the little swirl, little touch. I I was trying to yeah follow your lead where you're like let's give it a little extra. A yeah, little extra yeah, yeah. On the edges, work. I love how you laid it out for sure. Oh, uh, thank you. You're so encouraging. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, who else wants to share? I'll share. Hey, Shri. Hey, should I just hold up my, yeah. my pad here? Yeah. Wow, I am powerful. And I did a couple di different versions of it, yeah. so yeah. Nice, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Who else wants to share? I try to use a combination of script and print. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Thank you. But I, I think I, I really need to learn how you do the composition. It just comes so naturally. That is wonderful. Wow. Thank you. But I was taking a lot of sample notes from you. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Oh, wow. oh, there we go. Nice. Dang, look at that. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Ooh, look at your alphabet. <laughs> oh, really nice. I was just like doing some practicing. Yeah. Wow, you need to teach this class. <laughs> All right, thank you. Anyone else would like to share? All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, Nath. Uh, this is Mandy. I'll share. I'm not sure if I know how. Uh, hey, Mandy. I'll share. I don't think that I know how to share. Um, I don't do Zoom often, so I'll just share socially and I'll tag you. I'm okay, sorry. yeah, sure. Thank you. But what what's your mantra? What did you write? Can you unmute? Here, it's progress, not perfection. Oh yeah, that's so true. That is so true. And I kind of broke out the root versus the prefix and the suffix of each individual word so that, you know, I am focused on progress, her, 
accept I am. Nice. Um, so sorry, I can't show everyone. Oh, that, no that's problem. I look forward to seeing it later. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for being here. Anyone else? Nah? Oh, true. <laughs> oh, yeah, here, I'll share. I'm actually, Nath is with me right here. So I'm going to share hers. Do it scared. I like what you did with the little swirls and how you did your tails. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. All right, y'all, we are at a point where we will start adding embellishments. And this is where you can really get creative and, and get wild and do whatever you want. I have a particular style, which are those swirls that you've seen me do. Um, but like I said yesterday, you could do swirls, you could do flowers, you can do patterns. Um, um, maybe if we'll take a few minutes um, just for you to brainstorm what you actually want to do. But think about the composition of your work and think about how you could use the layout of your letters and incorporate these like embellishments. And they don't like, if you're happy with what you have now, you don't have to, you don't have to add embellishments, but it's just part of my process that I want to share. And so I would encourage you to kind of like, look at the letters and work with the letters. If you are um, not too sure where to start, I would just start with like, for example, cause I already know like kind of like what I'm going to do. So I do the swirl. So I would just like look at my letters and like, let's say like, here's a curve right here. Um, I'm just gonna start working with my letters. So I often do these swirls and like little lines that fit with my letters. Um, but you can do whatever. And like I had showed you yesterday, you can do flowers. You can do um, whatever, whatever pattern comes to mind. Think about when you were younger and you used to doodle. I mean, I'm hoping you all still doodle as adults, but think about when you were younger, was there anything that you would doodle all of the time? Perhaps that would be a great way to embellish your lettering work. Um, if you have anything around you right now that can inspire you, whether it's like if you're wearing something with a pattern or if you have plants with a pattern, anything around you with a pattern that you can use for inspiration. You can also use flowers. Um, circles, squares, lines, anything that you can think of. So take a few minutes and brainstorm or jump right into embellishments if you know what you're doing. Um, but we'll spend five or 10 minutes embellishment, embell on embellishments, but um, I'll start the timer like after a few minutes after we brainstorm a little bit. So uh, Feel free again at any moment, at any time to chat, to ask a question and chat. Um, and yeah, so I will be working on my embellishments and uh, I hope that you all feel comfortable with your embellishments. I also want to make a note. Um, so I started doing this thing because whenever I first started sharing my work on Instagram, I think I just started, um, I don't know, just like randomly just like writing words and sharing it. And then over time I developed a style and then it just kind of became a fun thing, but also a way for me to make sure like, I'm not too concerned with like people like copying my work or claiming it as their own like I could care less about that um just because I feel like everyone kind of imitates somebody and I don't really mind people who like copy 
exactly what I do because they're not going to do it exactly how I do it. And so anyway, whenever I first started to really get serious into lettering and to sharing and developing my own style, I started adding this little signature, which you've probably all seen of this little heart in my G and I kind of uh, design around it um, just to make it special, special and to make it like mine. Um, so if you want to think about that for yourself, um, I think it would be cool perhaps if you have your own little signature, um, and include it on your actual work. Can you turn that up? Different circumstances, I shouldn't be leaving. Oh, it's all a complicated thing. You know where to escape. With different circumstances, I shouldn't be leaving. So I didn't realize how quickly time was going by. Um, I'm going to give us uh, like 10 more minutes to work on this.
try to move faster I guess I just didn't realize how long it really takes me to swirl because I'm always like just like in a trance I thought I work quickly I got this like sudden urge to want to be like in Miami right now.
Okay, everyone, it's about that time to wrap up. As you can see, I am done. This is pretty much my signature style and the embellishments that I do. And from here, I usually, as you can see, I never really um, fill the whole, the whole space with like my embellishments just because um, I typically take pictures in like a square format. And so I only do the embellishments to like the extent of like the actual frame. And so in this case, I'm only going to do like a square. Um, thank you, Janet. Um, and so from here, I will basically take a picture of this and then I often will edit you just using like your regular phone editing. Um, I usually set it to just like black and white just because like that's my style. But I also wanted to kind of give you some of my like little tips and um, I guess like my perspective from like a designer. Um, this is like where my designer comes in is whenever I am getting ready to take pictures and to share it with people, like how I have it set up right now. Um, you might take note, like if you want to make your little, if you, when you share it and you want to make it like look a little bit more, um, I don't know, cool. Um, it's just like really simple. So with whatever space you're using and with whatever pens you're using, like, I think, um, it would just be cool if you like lay a pen here or lay a pen there and or whatever. And so you can kind of like take, and then take a picture overhead like how you see it and then you're able to crop crop it on your phone and put a filter on it or just use it how it is or just make it black and white and that's typically how I frame my designs for whenever I'm ready to like market whatever I'm doing or simply just to share it so this is just like a couple of tips um I had a really, really great time lettering with you guys and designing and embellishments. And I would really, really love for you all, if you want to right now, to share what you have done. Does anyone want to share what you've done? I'll share. Okay. I see your little embellishments. Strength is forthcoming. I like. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Who else wants to share? I will. Whoa, look at that. Wow, that's powerful. I like your use of color. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? Can I share yours, Nath? Here's what Nath did. 
That's nice. What inspired your design? I always do this little thing a lot. These little marks. Yeah. And I don't know. I know you do like a lot of this. But yeah. Like maybe I can try and continue that out. That's cool. I really dig it. Anyone else want to share before we move on to a raffle? Hey, Rolanda. Unmute, unmute. There we go. Sorry, oh, I didn't get okay. to unmute, but um, I just tried to make it darker and start adding some uh, birds and some colors. So I'm gonna keep working nice. on it. Nice. I like the little birds. That's super creative. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you all for being here with us today. I would really, really love to see your finished work online. So if you'd like to share your work online, just be sure to tag me or an art of collab. Hmm? We'll drop it in the chat. Yeah, we'll, we'll drop it in the chat right now, like our handles. Please feel, feel, feel free to share it with us and we'll repost and um, who knows, uh, you know, I feel like I have some ideas for the future that might uh, involve sharing some of your work. So I will um, I'll let you know what comes up. Um, just stay in touch with me. But right now, I'm really excited to talk about this raffle that we have going on. Thank you, Gina, for uh, sharing the space with us and just leading us in this workshop here. Um, I'm so glad that everybody got something out of it and like felt empowered, and I hope you felt empowered through your mantra writing. Um, this is Mariah with Art of Collab. Um, I'm here with Natalie. We're here in the space here. Uh, if you want to show, if you want to show us real quick, everyone in the setup here. Yes. Um, in the behind the scenes, it takes a lot. I uh, want everyone we're to here see all of the love during a whole effort. quarantine. Hold um, on, let me see if I can put my video did. on. Um, so sorry. One second, y'all. I want to give you the real. So we are here in Gina's apartment. Um, I'm far away, but everyone else that's close to Gina's masked up here. Um, go ahead and spotlight uh, Kiara's camera. Um, Oh yeah, that's right. Um, let's go ahead and do this here. So you can see everything. Uh, it takes many hands to make this happen. Um, and so this is, you know, just something that we're like really excited to give you guys. You know, originally we wanted to have this at the mural and, um, you know, this whole uh, series and what brought us together was our mural project in Eatonville. And so, um, you know, we are just really, you know, excited that we're still able to do this virtually, um, you know, with everything, it's just not safe to do it, but we encourage you guys to come out and see our mural in Eatonville, Florida. Um, if you are in the Florida area ever, um, I know we have some folks that are out of town there. Uh, and so we just thank you guys um, for supporting the space. And um, we wanted to make it afford, like free and accessible for folks to get um, just exposed to different forms of art. Um, and we welcome all ages. And so we, we, uh, we, ha we have a few more coming up uh, this summer. So I'll go ahead and uh, share some uh, flyers here. Uh, so if you visit us at www.articolab.org, um, we will have all of our like workshops all there. So next up will be uh, Ms. Nikki Barnes. Which is actually, she's actually in the room here. Um, yay, Nikki. Um, she'll be doing um, an ancestors visual journaling. Um, so if you love words, if you love words, you're here in this workshop. So if you love writing um, and you want to make it visual and honor, uh, she's going to be talking about ancestors and like how, uh, how we're slowly becoming like folks and pillars in our community um, and like honoring the people that came before us, where, whether it's grandmothers or folks in our community. And so we're really excited for her next workshop. She's also gonna have a DIY poetry workshop where she's gonna be, um, well, 
Nikki's in, in the room. Maybe she can explain better than I can. Um. Hi, <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> this was so great today. Oh my gosh. Um, and thank you so much for all your time and everybody coming out today. I feel like we did great work on the page and we're gonna do some more next week with the visual journal. Um, and then the DIY poetry reading, we'll find some of our favorite poems and also write some original ones and then share them together with some little kind of digital performance tricks to make everything sound great. So it was super fun being in the audience and this in the class. I loved it. Thank you. We can't, yeah, we can't wait to have you in the driver's seat and guiding folks in, in what you do because you're an amazing writer and <laughs> we can't wait to share space with you, Nikki. So yeah, um, quite a bit here. Uh, so, so much to look forward to. Um, so uh, if you visit www.articlelab.org, um, you will see all the workshops that are coming up. Um, so we have, uh, of course, uh, Nikki Barnes, and then we also have AJ Barbell. Um, he's gonna be doing a special fine art workshop on symbolism. A lot of his work has um, hidden uh, elements, of cultural elements, um, and what it means to be like a black man in America or just Afro-Caribbean roots, flags. He's like amazing and you know, um, a lot of his work is rooted in identity. And so um, that's something that he'll be exploring uh, symbolism, colors, why we use certain things, different cultural elements that we hold dear to us and incorporating it into fine art through painting and photography. Um, and so um, we encourage all folks to come, all ages, family, um, you know, family, young kids to adults, elders, if you'd like uh, for them to join on this workshop, we encourage all folks to come out and that's on the 16th, um, as well as the 23rd. Um, and Nikki's is gonna be on the 1st of August and the 1st off. So it's gonna be all in one weekend for Nikki and then AJ's is gonna be back to back on um, each weekend there, 16th and 23rd. And who we are, we're Art of Collab. Uh, we're a local group of um, Orlando-based artists and creatives who are just here in Orlando area trying to carve space for artists of color um, and like cr making it accessible and bringing art to the community. Um, not everybody has access to galleries or museums or things like that. And so we try to make it to where all folks in the community and families can enjoy it and um, be a part and also have their stories told. Um, and so, you know, it takes a community to do what we do. And so we, we really want to continue doing more free workshops. Um, and, you know, we've been able to reach folks in Canada and like folks in Ireland. And um, we're just the power of Google, the power of the internet. And we're just like, wow, you know, how, what, what if we can do more of these and it, it takes a community. And so we really encourage uh, if you could support us and donate uh, to this workshop and to our Rise Mural project that we did in Eatonville, which Gina was a part of and did so wonderful. Um, she allowed the poets and their words to come to life. So um, her hand lettering that you see here that she taught you, she did on the walls um, of, of Elizabeth Park. And so young kids are able to enjoy that for years to come and um, be able to see themselves in this mural. And so we're so honored. And uh, we're still doing a donor wall which you can you can actually um, still donate and have your name um, as a contributor on that wall. Um, if you donate more than $100, um, which is super accessible, you're able to have your name there um, and shown, you know, shown there for years to come. So, um, and it's, it's something that, you know, we want to still, um, there's, even though the mural is done, we still would like to um, add more elements to the mural and to the park and so um we would appreciate that uh you can go to www.articlelab.org backslash uh donate and um so without further ado uh we'll go ahead and get into the raffle so gina is going to be um giving away some beautiful prints um to one lucky winner so because you were in this workshop you're able to enjoy um, one of her pieces. 
Um, and if you know her very well, her work is so beautiful. And she does so much more than just hand lettering. She does abstract work. And so she's willing to give one of you guys um, one of her pieces of, of an art print of one of her pieces. It's called Awakening. Um, and you completed it back in like 2017, right? Mm -hmm. 2017? This was, I mean, there's a whole story behind this, this particular work of art, but it's a really, really special piece of work to me. It is what basically inspired the whole collection of work that I, that I did for an art show. And it was the first piece that I actually created. And so it's, it's super special to me. And I, and I created prints um, of this particular piece um, out of the collection. This is the only piece that I created prints for. So I would love to give it a new home. Um, to one, one lucky winner. Yeah, so we're excited for her to uh, give away this uh, print here. So we're going to go ahead and start the raffle here. I have everyone's name here that's on the uh, on the Zoom chat here. just want to make sure if you don't see your name, just uh, get in the, in the chat here. just want to make sure everybody's included here. Looks good. We got Ro your Rolanda, Shree, Tam, Mandy Lou, uh, Doreen, Hope, Janet. Joni and Nikki. Looks good, Nat? I think so. All right, so let's take a spin. <laughs> oh my God, Joni. Wow. Joni, you're going to take home uh, the Awakening uh, special art piece by Gina. Joni, how do you feel? Are you still here with us? I'm gonna unmute you here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Yes. Thank you for joining us, and, uh, and I'm sure we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we have your email to make sure that you get that uh, mailed to you. So. Thank you again for joining us. And be a part of our speech, Joni. All right. And then, so for the next drawing, so Gina's actually going to be giving away um, her, one of her lettering, hand lettering pieces. So let's take a look and see who's going to win that. Um, Wish we can get a little drum roll, but <laughs> okay. I got I got some uh, <laughs> some drummers in the building here. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's do a spin. Doreen. Okay, Doreen. Doreen, it's you. You you won a, a print, a special print by Gina. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I probably have her muted. Um, but Doreen, please. Um, wait. Is this Doreen from Ireland? Yeah. Doreen. Doreen. Oh, wow. I don't know so if Doreen much. is still in the chat. Is she? She might have left. But um, we'll make sure we get with Doreen. Yeah, Doreen. We have her uh, email here. I actually um, met her in Mexico when I was at an artist residency program. She's super lovely. All um, right. And so for the third print, um, one moment, y'all. For the third print, it's going to be a hand lettering. Tam, you won. Oh my gosh. Tam from Baltimore. Is it is Tam from Baltimore? She's still here. She was in our last uh, workshop with Joaquina. Um, but yeah, Tam, congratulations. 
We want to print by a special print by Gina. So we'll be sending you an email where you can choose which one. She's going to have a selection where you can choose one uh, let hand lettering print. Um, and so, yeah, um, I think we're feeling real generous, right? Like, we're real, real, real generous. Real generous. You know, I came across a, a video the other day. If you follow me on Instagram, I often will post my story and I repost it this one account and this woman was talking about emotional branding and mm -hmm. how when we do things we love we explode in generosity and that's exactly how I feel and that's how I always want to feel and I'm a very generous person by nature but it totally makes sense when she frames it like that like when we do things we love we explode in generosity so with that being said, I really, really, really appreciate every one of you for taking the time out to be with us today. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you took away some things that maybe you never really thought about. Um, so with that being said, I would love to offer each and every one of you who attended a free print. So everyone will get a free print. So be sure that we have your email addresses and we will email you and coordinate your addresses. If you're in Orlando and you feel comfortable meeting up, then I would be more than happy to meet up with you and give you your print. But thank you so much for being with us. Um, make sure you're following us on Instagram for more updates, more workshops, and Again, I would love to see all of your finished pieces, so be sure to tag us, and I will be sure to share it with the team and share it with the world. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day. Gina, thank you so much. That is like incredible and amazing on top of incredible and amazing, and that's just who you are and I just appreciate you so much. You're such an inspiration. I'm so inspired by you and your generosity and giving of your time and your talents and now you're gifting us something too. Good grief, you're amazing. Thank you, <laughs> Thank so, you much. so much. We appreciate you Miss Rolanda so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So yeah, we'll definitely be sending you a thank you email. You know what we're talking about. Um, we really appreciate you and all your support. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love the energy and I will continue to support. I'm so glad that I learned about um, the organization. And yeah, this is not going to be our, our last interaction for sure. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so thank you again for joining us uh, for uh, the Mantras and Music Workshop. Again, uh, join, join us the same time uh, next week on Saturday um, with Miss Nikki Barnes, local poet, activist, community leader, and we're so honored to uh, hold space virtually. Um, so definitely um, dive in, bring your journal, bring your notebook, your favorite pen, um, and some you know visual things, watercolors and different things like that. I'm sure she can allow multiple mediums, but yeah, we're, we're gonna dive in next week again. So thanks guys. Bye. 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 Thank you guys. Oh. <laughs>